Hi, I'm Tara Malecki, and I am a Nikon ambassador, and I love to take photographs of children. So since holidays are coming up, people love to take portraits. I have a friend coming over. She's bringing her children, and we're not only gonna have some fun, but I'll share some tips and techniques with you along the way as well. In my house, we have a holiday scene already set up. And I wanna think about things like uh, where the light's coming in and what the overhead lights are like and where I wanna pose my subjects within the frame of that location. Okay, first of all, nice job. These are great outfits. What these kids are wearing makes a difference. I need to consider that. I have to think, what are the tones and colors of my background? How can I bring them in in a way that it all complements each other and they stand out? And, and from a perspective of if I have multiple people, I need to make sure they coordinate well together also. These are the ones. I like it. Let's do it. Come on. Here, you hold these. Let's go. So the difference between a snapshot and a portrait is often the application of light. When I'm working with the existing light in the room, I want to not just use that, but also I want to brighten the faces of my subject because I love it when they have catch lights, like bright, shiny lights in the eyes. I actually love using a speed light where I can just put it right on the camera, turn it up, use the little swivel head, swivel it up to the ceiling. All I'm gonna do is put it on auto, turn it on, like just on, and right here, as you can see, I already have it set up that I bounce it to the ceiling. And then I get this really soft light that hits all of you. And it's brilliant. When I'm taking that photograph, though, I have to keep in mind everything else that's going to be in that photograph. And when that's happening, I have to think, what's going on in the background, and how does it affect my subject? Anything that's not adding to my portrait, I don't want in there. So if I've got a great shot, my subject looks great, the background looks great, and there's just this little scraggly plant, you know? I'm going to step forward, move the plant, keep shooting. From my perspective, there are two ways to approach posing when it comes to children. The one approach is to step in and set it all up perfectly and then try to get them to adjust to what is more naturally them and get the shot. The other way is to build a pose. Just throw yourself down and let me move your arm this way and let me move your leg this way and let's put your chin over here and let me change the angle to get the shot I want. And I'm not always one way or the other. I'm going to shift it based on what I'm seeing the subject needs to better be able to express themselves. When I'm arranging a portrait, that's kind of how I think about it. When I'm putting a portrait together, I'm thinking about composition. I have a bit of an idea. Like, I know the backdrop I'm going to choose. I am thinking from a composition perspective how I might set them up. So I need to see, okay, what are you doing naturally? And let me respond to that. If you're going to flop back, let me stand up and shoot downwards at this kind of angle so I can get what you're trying to give me and not overdo this, but just respond on the spot. But then mix it up a little bit. Maybe they're on the ground or you're on the ground or they're on a chair and you're shooting to the side and bringing up and down your angle can not only change the position of where the subject is in the frame, but also the way you're capturing the background. When I'm taking photographs, I'm thinking about the fact that there's more to it than just clicking the camera. There's interaction, there's posing, there's thinking about lighting, there's the idea of bringing the energy back into the shot and re-engaging subjects as you go. <laughs> okay, less of that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was exactly <laughs> what I was gonna tell you to do. And I only have a few seconds with you till you switch to the fake smile, so I have to go really fast. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Reese, wake up! Wake up! At the time I decide I wanna bring a pet into the shot, but now I have additional considerations. First of all, I have multiple creatures in my frame, and so I need to change uh, not only how close or far I am from my subject to make that work, I need to think also about how much is in focus. Another thing is I have to get their attention, and not only do I have to get the dog's attention, I need to keep the kid's attention, and now I'm interacting with three different spirits. So what I'm doing is often I'm calling the dog, I'm telling you look here, lean over here, I, I'll get two of them fine, the other one's completely zoned out, and on and on and on, and that's super, super normal. Okay, I'm gonna call him. Stay with me, stay with me, ready? Look, look. One, two, three. Boja, 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 boja. Marley, 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 Marley. Ah, ah. Marley. Reesey, wake up. 
mucho, 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 mucho. Yeah. It will take time. So by the time I have finished with four or five setups, in terms of we're in this location, we're in this location, gosh, sometimes it can be hours. It's certainly not me grabbing a camera and clicking away. So even though this video that we're doing right here might be a few minutes long, it was hours of work. What I'd love for you to take away from this is let things unfold. Use really simple methods that are not hard. They're easy ways to use this equipment to get great shots and have fun with the whole process. It may take time, but it's a great time. And it's something that you do now that will really last forever. And it's worth it.